my lovelies and welcome to another video. Today's one is one of my most requested videos ever and I'm actually very excited to film it. I've been kind of postponing it a little bit just because with the Paris move and everything that has been going on, I kind of, first of all, didn't have my full collection with me. And second of all, it's been kind of like taunting me how to do this. Like I was not sure whether or not I should do this in kind of like handbags parts, like full Hermes collection, etc. But then I realized that doing the handbags could probably be a little bit more beneficial because if I do everything at once, there would be shoes, bags, ready to wear, uh, jewelry. I even have an Hermes watch and, you know, like homeware. A lot of stuff and everything 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 in this video is um, something that I have purchased with my own money before I start getting into it I would like to put a little disclaimer all of the items or shall I say handbags that you will see in this video were purchased by myself and they were all full priced items that I have purchased in the Hermes boutique myself I know people often speculate about these things whether the brand gifts them whether there is a like massive discount Discount, how come influencers are wearing Hermes now and actually I just want to be super honest with you guys I have purchased all these items I've never heard that Hermes is gifting anybody and I hope it stays that way because I kind of like to earn my way uh, and I like to save the money for the bags I like to look forward to them and for me this is like a this is like an exciting process I know some people get offended by it but in all honesty I don't have an ego when it comes to these things. I don't expect to be treated like I don't know what. I am happy to earn my way into the brand. And one day if I had a brand, I would also like to be proud about it. You know, like one day if I do something that is on like such a high luxurious level of really good quality craftsmanship, where it requires days and days to produce something, I would also be very proud about it. So yeah. Another thing that people often ask me is whether or not I bought some of these bags from resellers or uh, websites that are reselling the items purchased from the boutique and the answer is no. Every single one of the bags that you will see here uh, I have purchased in the boutiques themselves all around the world pretty much. Most of them were purchased in the Fabourg Saint Honoré uh, boutique but there were few or one. I'm not sure. <laughs> Purchased also in Vienna store, in London store. So yeah, if you are curious about how you can get an Hermes bag from a boutique itself, I have actually done, I think, a few videos about that. So go and check them out. And of course, if you're an Hermes lover, just like I am, please do click the subscribe button. Um, I think we should be friends because there's so much we can discuss when it comes to Hermes. I mean, uh, let's get straight to the bags. Actually, how I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it in an order of how I was getting them. I think that will be quite exciting. Uh, the first bag that I would like to show you is uh, Constance PM. This is the first of the bags that I will show you and I got this one in the boutique in Vienna and guys it's getting real approaching the Hermes boutique to get this baby and guys just finished at Hermes I feel so 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 lucky because as you can see we left huge bag and a bag. Ooh, there's a lot inside. Anyway, um, we really have to rush now because we're leaving Vienna. This is the only reason why we're here. So, and the Vienna schnitzel, of course. I actually was um, just passing by the Hermes store. I walked in and there was a lady working there that I started speaking to. Funnily enough, she was from um, ex-Yugoslavia, as I would like to say. So we started speaking in our language. And I told her that I was really after a Constance bag in burgundy color with gold hardware, like PM size. I said I would like it to be burgundy and ideally would like it to be a leather such as Epsom just because I don't want it to get easily scratched. Um, it would have been my first kind of like a boutique purchase bag, so it was quite important to me. I mean, it's still very important to me every time I get a new Hermes bag. And the lady said, look, we haven't got anything in stock. We kind of prioritize people from Vienna and yeah, that is it. But you can leave a phone number and if something happens, I'll be in touch. A week later, I just found the WhatsApp conversation. I received a message saying this was in 2018. 
I received the message, pictures of the bag saying best wishes from Vienna. And I was like, oh my God. So the price of the bag was 5,300 euros. If I forget to say the prices of the other bags, I will leave them in the description box below. I know you guys are saying these are very useful for you. And normally I don't like talking about prices and money because I find it to be a very, very tricky subject, especially now in times when people are struggling and losing jobs and everything is just really difficult for the world itself. I don't want to be insensitive about these things. But then at the same time, I know that people who are really like Hermes fans, they are interested. So I'll leave the prices in the description box below. And if you are interested, check them out. Then after I got it, I wore this bag every single day. I believe in 2018, there was like a little rumor that Hermes will stop doing Constance bags, like stop like permanently and I was like oh my god I would love to have a Constance in every single color I think it's such a beautiful young bag a bag that you can wear every single day as a crossbody I wore it with like my sneakers I remember very well sneakers dresses all day long and this burgundy color is so perfect you will see the leather is Epsom hopefully it will kind of focus quite nicely and I really love it and the hardware is yellow gold for me it's just so beautiful after that i really tried for a birkin or a kelly i always said that i prefer the kelly and that i would love a kelly much more because it has a shoulder strap i love that i think kelly is always like a little bit cooler than birkin but that's just a personal feeling i don't have to necessarily um you know like take it uh, as i say it so i remember that year i tried in vienna again there was no chance i was going to vienna quite a few times and there was like, it was just pretty impossible. I maybe went twice more to ask about it. Anyway, I spent the whole December 2018 watching like Hermes unboxings, thinking about it, thinking which color I would want, approaching it very strategically. And in January 2019, I was in Paris for Haute Couture. I remember trying to apply for an appointment at the Hermes Faubourg store and I got lucky really lucky so i remember i was in paris with christina at the time we went to the boutique together do you think we're gonna get offered the bag i hope so because it was so stressful getting here <laughs> I, hope so. I hope so too guys fingers crossed the moment is here we got the bag offered guys, you don't even understand how beautiful Sorry, I was so excited that I like almost didn't film. I met Michael Cost. I thought that was like kind of crazy and I specifically asked my wonderful sales associate who is my sales associate in Paris till this date now and who has um, actually helped me with so many of these bags. Um, I asked her for a green Kelly 28 in uh, Cellier and I remember the day before that I spoke to a friend Vicky who has many Hermes handbags. I asked her, what should I go for? She said, I think like a Kelly 28 would be great for you because I was not sure if I should go for Kelly 28 or Kelly 25. She said, I think for a first Kelly, you should go for 28 because later on you will gravitate more towards the smallest bags and smaller bags, so go for it. And honestly, I think this bag is so incredible. I'm so happy and I feel very proud of myself that I managed to self-educate on leathers, on craftsmanship, on Hermes background so much that every single one of the bags that I have chosen in the boutique are great buys and I have never regretted them. So, uh, Kelly 28, uh, this is Cellier style Epsom leather in cactus green. This cactus color came out in 2019, so I was one of the first um, people the lady told me to get the cactus color. And for me, this bag is, I mean, I want it so much. I love it so much. I think it's a brilliant, brilliant handbag because it brightens so many different looks. And it's quite funny that normally people go for their first Hermes bags to be neutral. I did completely opposite. I wanted to go first for the colorful ones, for the pop of color. I never wanted this handbag to look like an old kind of lady market bag. I wanted it to be happy, cheerful, and later on I went to more neutrals because I was like, okay, I also want, also my style has changed a little bit, but I still love this one. And I think it's perhaps even my favorite handbag. 
It's exactly what I wanted, a green Kelly 28 with gold hardware and that's what I got. Same year, I thought I should try my luck again. It was about six months later, I believe, and I'll never forget this. I was cleaning my home in England and I was thinking I would love another Hermes bag. I would love a Birkin 25 specifically, but you know, where am I going to get it from? right? So I, I remember very clearly, I applied on my phone, even though I was in, in England, I applied for uh, an appointment. And by the end of the day, my sister called me and she was like, you're crazy. My sister is logged in my email and she also received the notification that I am having an appointment. Luckily, I applied on Saturday. So because the Hermes Faborg boutique is closed on Sundays, on Saturdays you apply for Monday. So I had a whole one day to organize what I wanted to do. So I was thinking, should I, should I not? I mean, really, England and Paris are so close to each other. And this was pre-COVID times when we could like do whatever we wanted. If I wanted to go to New York for a weekend for shopping, I would have done it. I mean, I've done a New York and LA trips for two days before. So why not go to Paris on a train, you know, so easy. So it's a risk because come on, I'm going to Paris and I could get nothing, right? If you guys know me, you know that I'm always willing to take a risk. I am a person that has always been that way and it's always kind of paid off. <laughs> so I got my appointment, I went to Paris and I told myself, look, even if nothing happens, I'm gonna have a beautiful weekend in Paris or not even a weekend, like Monday, Tuesday. So I went to the boutique, I met my essay and I told her that I would love a Birkin 25, that I'm someone who likes to wear a lot of kind of girly dresses for summer and I would love to have something in more like a pink color, you know? Perhaps pink or um, red maybe, but at the same time I knew I already had the burgundy constants so I was like, hmm, you know, try and get me something nice. And she did. She got me my, I think, most worn Hermes bag of my whole collection. And it's this baby here. It's a Birkin 25 Togo leather in rose pourpre with palladium uh, hardware, as you can see. Sorry that the clochette is now under. I've just like quickly closed it because I was taking some pictures, which will be going live on my blog this week, I believe. I'm doing, I'm gonna do an in-depth comparison of different bags in my collection. So if you like to read about handbags, there's a lot more of that on the blog this month. There'll be a lot of blog posts. So check the link in the description box. And I actually wrote a whole story of how I got this bag, how I styled it, how I got it, the whole process, everything will be on the blog. So make sure to check it out. Now this bag, I, for more than you can imagine. Like every single summer dress was me and my Birkin 25. One more thing I wanted to add is that you will notice that I have not re removed all of the plastic from the hardware. Can you see that? So over here, I still have the plastic. I have removed it on the main, um, main clasp because I've discussed with many of my friends and they say you can keep it for a while, but after a while you need to take it off because um, the metal can actually oxidize under in the reaction with glue and it can get very stained. So I do take them off after a while. So that was it. My collection was slowly like building and I got to December. I really wanted another bag. But I knew that in Paris there was a quota. You could get two Hermes Kelly or Birkin bags per year. Constance doesn't count. So Hermes Birkin Kelly, it's two per year. And I reached my quota in Paris and that was the place where I had the best relationship with my essay. I was not sure really what I wanted to do. I really wanted one, but then I thought, you know, it's okay, I can wait till next year. So one day I was in December meeting my friend for lunch. We were going to have lunch at Hakkasan in London, which is quite close to the Hermes store. It was December, just before Christmas. I think it was like 21st of December. I walked in the Hermes store. It was very busy at the time, as you can imagine, before Christmas. So I was walking around and the lady came to me and she said, are you waiting for a bag? I was like, of course, I'm waiting for the bag. All of my life I've been waiting for a bag, you know, but I never thought I would be approached with that, say, like with that sentence. 
So I said to her, yeah, like I would like to speak to someone about a bag. And she said, I'm gonna put your name on the list. And then I said my name. She said, yeah, I know. So she followed me, the lady followed me. And I don't know if this helped, but I don't think so because she was not the one that offered me a bag. She was more like um, assisting and welcoming people into the boutique. It had happened before to me that someone has recognized me in the boutique, specifically in Milan. There was a lady that recognized me in boutique. Um, so a lady um, said hello to me. She recognized me in Milan boutique, but when I asked for a bag, I was told no. So I don't really know if those things are connected. I was sticking around and I remember I was waiting for quite a while, maybe a half an hour even, to be seen. And then eventually, when I got seen by my SA, I recognized another lady in the boutique that I knew, but I did not want to ask for a bag because I, I hate asking for favors. I don't like to do anything like um, jumping the queue or trying to get things through the connections. I'm not that girl, I'm not that person. Like. I could use so many connections in my life, but I have never. And I come from a family where my parents could have helped me as well with connections, like working in pharmacy, for example, I could have done so much, but I'm not someone that ever likes to pull connections. And honestly, if you know me in real life, you will know this story. So it's not something, I'm sure so many of you will not believe me and that's okay, but people who know me in real life and will watch this video, they will know what I'm talking about. I've said no to so many times, jumping the queue and actually working for it. So I waited, I didn't ask for anything. And then when my turn came, I saw the essay and in the most basic way I said, I would like to get a Birkin. I would like a Birkin 30 in red leather, Togo uh, with palladium hardware. He said, okay, let me have a look at the back. And I thought, this is so weird. Like, of course not. Like, there's a waiting list. It's not like you walk in the boutique and you say, I want this and you get it. But I had a massive buying history at London Bond Street um, boutique. I purchased like 10 pairs of shoes, clothes, home stuff, like a lot of stuff at the boutique. So I don't know if that contributed. Anyway, he came with a bag and he said, it's not a 30 but you might like it. A Birkin 35 in a Taurillon leather and geranium is the color. And this is what it looks like. I use this bag so much for traveling. This is my travel tote. When I was getting this handbag, I'll never forget when my sales associate said, we have a Birkin in 35, I was like, mm, I'm sorry, this is not what I want. 35 is so big. Why am I gonna wear it? My hand's gonna fall off. It's too heavy. Goodbye. But I have worn this bag so much. And the reason why I bought it is he gave me a black Birkin to try on, which was not the one for sale. It was like an um, exhibition piece. He gave me to try it on. So I tried it on and I said, ah, I like it. And I loved it in black. I was so surprised. And then he said, well, I have all of your specifics that you have asked for. Red palladium hardware. It's just that it's 35. And I said, I don't know, but truth be told, it was a great decision that I bought this bag because I do have the height to wear a Birkin 35. I'm, I think 173, 174 centimeters, something like that. Sometimes 172, I don't know, depends on how I'm measured. Between 172 and 174 centimeters. I think like this bag looks good on me and I love wearing it with biker boots, a black outfit, like even a hoodie. And this at the airport, I don't know why, it fits everything like a laptop, agenda, which is why it's kind of looking a little bit worn because I put a lot of stuff in this bag, I have to say. And it's the Tarillon leather, which is a little bit softer than the Epsom or Togo. But honestly, I love this bag so much, so much. I feel a little bit guilty that I judged the 35. I shouldn't have done that. I apologize to you because you are fantastic. I still have the protective plastic on it and actually I'm gonna remove it now with you guys because this bag is something that I have worn a lot, I will wear a lot and I think now that it's one year old, we can do that together, right? You are witnessing a special moment. There we go. Ta-da! Now it looks so much prettier. Actually, mm, now I'm not gonna say what I'm gonna get next because um, every time I say what I'm gonna get next, someone else gets it as like inspired by and I like to keep my own ideas to myself. So yeah, you will see what I'm gonna get next. 
but I love this bag so much. I think it's so beautiful. Here we go. Now you can see it, what it looks like with the stickers taken off. Beautiful. This is my travel companion. I love her so much and I think she's such a rock and roll bag. It's probably the most rock and roll of all the bags in my collection. Several months later, I took you with me to New York, London, Milan, Paris Fashion Weeks, and I think Copenhagen and more, I don't know. We traveled a lot. It was this year. What? Guys, sometimes I think like this year is five years, and sometimes I think it's like this. I really don't understand what's going on, but anyway. This February, I took you with me to Paris Fashion Week. On the day before my last day, I got an appointment at Hermes for both. Actually, all the days before that I applied, I got rejected. And that is when I finally got my wish come true in Paris of getting a Birkin 30, which proved to be probably my least worn bag. I think I love it. I think it's beautiful. Like a lot of my friends say that it's their favorite bag I own. And I'm talking about this lady over here. This is a Birkin 30 in Epsom leather. It's the only Birkin that I have in Epsom leather. And I think that makes it so special. It's very sturdy. As you can see, there is no flimsiness to it. It is in cray leather and it has rose gold hardware, which is my first bag with rose gold hardware. Why is this my least worn bag? You might be wondering when it's so beautiful, so classic, so neutral. And the answer is very simple. I got it in February and then they locked us down. And then we were just stuck in quarantine together. That was it. There was no chance to wear it more, which is very sad. But now we're together, we're reunited. I got her with me and I'm wearing it much more and I'm gonna make it up for, you know, all the lack of wearing. I am very, very happy with this handbag. I will leave price of it below. I will have to check the receipt of the price in February. It's also difficult for me to remember because it was not the only handbag I purchased on that occasion. So it was my first birthday that I purchased of 2020 and with it in order not to touch my quota I also got stunning Hermes Violet Claire Doubly. This is such a special Hermes with palladium hardware. It was my first Constance with palladium hardware. Inside of it the leather is not suede as you will see. This is a very, very rare handbag. I checked it on online because I wanted to see other people show it and wear it and stuff. I saw that it was selling for like 30,000. I was shocked because the second market for the bags is so ridiculous. I mean, I have no words. This bag as well didn't get many opportunities to go out because I mean, you know, when would I wear it? in lockdown i don't think so but i love it so much i'm so happy i got it and i'm so happy i have such a special hermes handbag in my collection a one that's very rare and one that will be going a lot around with me this autumn because suede for autumn is when I got that bag, I got so many offers to sell it online and I was like, no, 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 this is a bag that I want and I want to keep, so no selling. So I moved to Paris in May and here I am in Paris, you know, in the place where the first ever flagship boutique of Hermes opened. And at one point in June, I believe it was June, I thought I really should try my luck with a mini Kelly. I wanted a mini Kelly for a while, but honestly, it's like such a mission to get a mini Kelly bag from the boutique that I have cannot even explain. I really wanted one. I didn't know what to do. I kept applying, 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 but since I only got my Birkin in February, in June, I guess it was like telling me not even been half a year yet, girl, sit tight, relax, forget about it. <laughs> I said, okay, you know, I'm not gonna be greedy. I'm not gonna going for more. I tried 10 times, 10 consecutive days. I tried to apply for an Hermes appointment and I got a no. So I said, okay, I'm not gonna go to Faubourg. I'm gonna go to the boutiques on the other side of the river. I've never shopped at Georges Saint, but I thought I'm gonna go to Boulevard Saint-Germain and try my luck there. I've said all of that in a separate video, so you should go and watch it. But my boyfriend at the time, he was so sick hearing about this story. So he also tried to apply for a mini Kelly. Now he has no history under his name, I believe. No history of shopping in Hermes. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know, but the first try and he got an appointment. So we went together, I saw my essay and I told her, I really, really, really want a mini Kelly. Like I want a black mini Kelly. This is what I want. Are you ready? And my sales associate said, mini Kellys are very rare, but here she was. I have worn this bag pretty much whole summer. Like every time that I could go out for a dinner, I wore this bag. I love this bag. It fits nothing, but it's so perfect. It's such a beautiful, beautiful, 
handbag and for me this is how i rolled for this 2020 already a white and a black and i was like yeah, yeah i'm winning and i was very happy because my boyfriend made an appointment this went on his record so i still had my last shopping experience at the fabo store in february i got that and i loved it and then my sales associate told me tomorrow i have something else that i would like to show you and she showed me a kelly backpack which i said thanks but it's not for me so she said i might have something else that you will like she brought two bags two boxes and that was a bag that i have worn so much i already probably wore this constance more than i have worn this it's in a top a leather so stunning i love it so much because it's like a super classic handbag i remember when i went to the boutique i think i was wearing like flare trousers or something like jeans like a very cool outfit uh, i had like a saint laurent leather sleeveless jacket and this actually looked so good which is kind of surprising kind of not but with hermes handbags sometimes they look quite elegant classy and you know not too like casual but this one looks really casual i think and i love this handbag so much I have worn it a billion times already and for me I was like yes I'm winning I love it and I was very happy the time has passed and we got to September and I didn't have many of these Hermes bags with me I came with this baby here and this one so this is what I had initially but then on my last visit to London I brought this this I don't know I don't want to lie to you but anyway I didn't have any of these handbags with me and I needed handbags and the borders were not closed but I was not going to travel for handbags so in September we moved into our new home and I started like thinking okay I know exactly what I want I wanted so many pieces from Hermes homeware and there's still like a long list of things that I want to get so I went into the boutique and I spoke to someone about it and they told me okay um, you know you'll go and see your essay I want to see my essay I told her I would love a Birkin 25 and I would love a more muted color so ladies and gentlemen the last one in my collection and the one that I'm wearing so much it's the second of two Birkin 25s and look how different they are. I never wear them closed. Of course, I always wear them open. This is what the difference is between the open and the closed Birkin. Both are in Togo leather. I don't know if you can tell. This one is rose gold hardware. So it's the first one with rose gold hardware. Hopefully you'll be able to tell. Uh, first Birkin 25 with rose gold hardware because the bag that I have already with rose gold hardware is here. I think there's nothing more beautiful than this stunning color combination of gray and rose gold. It's so stunning and this Birkin 25 is in color a top. This is something that I wear like, okay, even with a tracksuit and a hoodie and a cap with sneakers because this is so freaking cool. I love it so much and it's just a beautiful, beautiful bag. My sales associate offered me this bag even before I asked for the homeware stuff. So it was not like I came and I bought lots of homeware stuff and then she offered me the bag. I got the bag first and then I told her, hey, I also want some homeware stuff. And she told me, actually, I don't wear homeware, so I'll direct you to somebody. And that's how it was. I just wanted to tell you because I don't think it has anything to do with the fact that I bought a lot of home stuff. I think that at Hermes, the most important thing is that they know that you're a loyal customer, that you buy other stuff except from just Birkins and Kelly's, and that you really love the brand, that you're passionate about it, that you wear the pieces, that you don't really sell them, because that's very important. I think, like, to be honest, if you ask me, people who buy these bags for, I don't know, this bag is 5,600 euros, okay? And people out there are selling it for 15. Am I wrong to think that that's very unethical? Like you're basically charging 10K someone that's not able to get it. I don't know, I think that's unethical. Um, if, I would, if I would find this bag for 6K or 7K, I would think that's okay because you know, at least I don't have to spend money to go to the, like to Paris or to pay for the hotel. So in the end it's the same, but I think people who sell it for 10K more is like just highly unethical. That's my personal opinion. If that changes, I will let you know but for now i just think that is what it is you know that is my hermes handbag collection how many have we got one two three four five six seven eight nine nine so the next one will be the number 10 i cannot wait already for that to happen even though i got my last one like two months ago but you know 
I think I'll wait probably until the next year now because my quota is out for this year and I'm good. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I cannot wait to see you in my next one. Bye guys!